Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hi, my name is Jesse. Um, and I'm very, very sorry that I speak almost no Japanese, only food words. <laughs> um, if you ever need to email me, this is how to find me. If you ever need to tweet me, this is how to find me. This talk is intended to be somewhat interactive. And I know that's not always common here, but it's okay to, well, if you wanted to shout at me, that's fine, but the easiest thing is probably to tweet me. <laughs> Maybe if I say something that you understand, but not everyone would understand, you could tweet a translation. You could say something funny about me. Um, it's safe, because I can't read any Japanese, so I won't know what you say. But I'm recording it. <laughs> um, so the reason that Maki-san asked me here today is because I'm the current Pearl 5 Pump King. And when I say Pump King, what that means is, well, we'll get to it. Um, Pump King is this sort of old word we have in the Pearl 5 community for the guy who's responsible for cleaning up. The person who sweeps the floors, who makes sure that patches are applied. Um, you know, a janitor. Pearl 5 is 16 years old. Pearl 5 is, you know, getting up to be a bit of a grown-up. Um, and this has caused people to start saying crazy, crazy things. Like that our language is dead. People say this. Um, they're wrong. <laughs> they're very wrong. They say that Pearl Hackers are desperate. That we're going to do anything possible to save our language. Well, we are kind of desperate, but not in a bad way. Um, these people, they seem to be thinking of this time when it took five years for us to get 5.10 out when Python was getting trendy and people had just discovered that you could build a web framework and so people had started to embrace Ruby. But things have actually been pretty good in the Pearl world these days. Um, there's exciting stuff going on. Um, there's lots of cool code on CPAN. And so uh, there's lots of cool code on CPEN. You've got Moose. Moose is the is a postmodern object system for Perl 5. Um, it basically is a really, really sexy way to build OO systems in Perl. Um, <laughs> remember when I said you can tweet me? As I uh, I've before seen this cute little video on um, about Perl from Nico Nico Duga, and it had a very clever way of interacting with the world. And so it seemed like a good idea. If you tweet me, everyone will see it. <laughs> it. Yeah, everyone will see it. So anyway, Moose is really cool. Um, Plaque is really, really cool. Plaque is uh, Tatsuko Miyagawa's reinvention of how Perl on the web can interact. Um, in fact, my talk is built on Moose and Plaque. It, um, I didn't actually use CPEN minus to install things, but CPEN minus is a clean, easy way to get CPAN modules installed. You don't have to do anything special. It doesn't annoy you by running tests or prompting about dependencies. It just works. Um, Devel Declare is a clean way to start extending Perl 5 syntax. Any event, any event is this glorious way to integrate all the Perl object or all of the Perl event loops. So it means that you can build something that integrates, say, web sockets and Twitter. So I'm using any event Twitter or any event Twitter stream, and I'm getting a Twitter stream, and I'm streaming it out with uh, with Web Hippie through Plaque, and you're seeing black text and black background. <laughs> What's wrong? Anyway, um, develop NYT prop if you haven't seen it. Not used for this talk, but it's a reinvention of, of the Perl profiler. It's really pretty. It shows you everything about what's going on in your code. It makes it easy to make your code fast. Um, and there's a lot more I can't manage to talk about in a 40-minute slot. Um, but jumping back a little bit, 
About half a year ago, I made a really terrifying upload. Something that I never thought I might do. Um, and it scared me for days before I did it. I went to pause, and in the brief here, thing here, you can see Perl 5 Perlvo.gz. Just like you upload modules to CPEN, this is how Pumpkins upload Perl to CPEN. And I did it. And now Perl is 5.12. That's the current stable release. Um, the really neat thing is that nobody has popped up and said, your Perl 5.12 doesn't work, it just broke everything. It's incompatible with 5.8 and 5.10. So I haven't destroyed the internet. And I'm really happy. The thing that makes me happiest about releasing Perl 5.12 is that I did not destroy the internet. <laughs> um, but sometimes people who aren't as involved in the Perl community, they'll start to ask us questions like, 5.12? Weren't you going to go to 6? Weren't you going to go to 6 a long time ago? And this is sort of an important thing that everyone needs to understand about Perl 6. I spent some time working as the Perl 6 project manager, which basically meant that I let the people who actually knew what they were doing build Perl 6, and I stood up at the front of the room and shouted about how Perl 6, well, it's a research project. It is being designed, it is being built, it is not done yet. You might not have it by Christmas. Um, but people still will ask me, when's Perl 6 coming out? And historically, we've always said that Perl 6 is coming out by Christmas. <laughs> the thing is that that's no longer true. <laughs> Perl 6 came out on July 29th, Rakuto Star. It is a basic implementation of a core subset of Perl, of Perl 6. It's not really fast for production yet, but you can play with it, you can install it, new releases are coming out. You can find out more about it at rakuto.org. Um, and Perl 6 is really cool, don't get me wrong. Just because I'm the Perl 5 pumpkin and I'm up here telling you that Perl 6 is a research project, that doesn't mean it's not wonderful. It's wonderful. I can't wait for the future where we have Perl 6. But Perl 5 is still the future. Perl 5 is not going away. Perl 6 is just our sister. She's our little sister. And we like her. She's our friend. She's growing up. She's a brat. Larry says she's a brat. So, but the important thing to know is that the 5 and the 6, they're not version numbers. At least not for a programming language. Perl 5 is a programming language. Perl 6 is a programming language. 5 and 6 aren't versions of a programming language. They're just names. And they're different languages. So, just to explain this, Perl 5 was created by this guy. Perl 5 was created by Larry Wall. Perl 6. Perl 6 was created by this guy. <laughs> He's also Larry Wall. But with a new rep of his brain that's even more awesome and even crazier. Um, but yeah, so those are version numbers for Larry's head. Um, and in the Perl 5 world, we're really excited about Perl 6 growing up because Perl 6 makes some of the stuff that is still hard in Perl 5 easy. Um, in Larry's words, it has greater whippetoppitude and greater manipulexity. These are crazy words for us basically saying that Perl 5, or Perl is designed to make hard things easy and impossible things really hard. And what happens with Perl 6 is that the things that are almost still impossible in Perl, 6, in Perl 5 become somewhat easy in Perl 6. So, but in the meantime, you need to know this. Perl 5 is not going away. Perl 6 is not going to make Perl 5 go away. Um, so 5.12, 5.12 came out recently, um, and new versions of Perl 5 are going to keep coming out. 5.12 had some really cool new stuff in it. First up, all of the features that were brand new in Perl 5.10, it's okay to use them, because 5.10 isn't the bleeding edge brand new release anymore. It's now safe. All the 5.10 stuff is old, it's boring, it's okay to use. Um, one of the really interesting changes about 5.12 is that when you say use 5.12, Perl automatically defaults to using strict. Um, also, it, tur it turns on deprecation warnings. So, over the past 16 years in Perl, we've made some decisions that we later decided were bad. We made mistakes. And sometimes we will take features and we'll deprecate them. 
will say, this feature that we thought was a really good idea in 2001, we're really sorry, it's wrong. And we try really hard to still make sure your code works. But now, if you're using a feature that we've decided is bad and wrong and might go away someday, in 5.12 it warns by default. This includes things that have been deprecated for 10 years. Um, in 5.12, there is no more suet Perl. Um, the magic set UID wrapper in Perl, dead and gone. It was a bad idea. You want to leave that to something special, a specialized tool like sudo. Sudo is much safer. Its designers built it just for security. In the past year, there have been three exploits, CVE exploits against sudo. So just imagine how bad suit Perl might, would, must be. Um, one of the cool things in 5.12 is you can now declare package versions right in line. You don't have to say my dollar version. You can just say package foobar, 1.0. Perl 5 is now year 2038 compliance, even on 32-bit platforms. Everyone used to be afraid of Y2K and having all of your math break in 2000. Well, it turns out that this is actually now a problem because Unix, a lot of Unix stuff will start to break in 2038. In the US, at least, there are many people who have 30-year mortgages. And so they calculate how much they owe every month for 30 years. So now for mortgages that started after 2008, if you're not year 2038 compliant, your mortgage will overflow. Um, there was a lot of Unicode cleanup in 5.12, and Perl 5, 5.12 includes Unicode 5.2. For 5.14, we're working towards Unicode 6, which includes Unicode emoji. So you will be able to have the pile of poo emoji um, native in Perl. Some of the really coolest stuff, the stuff that even I don't fully understand, um, is some changes to the, in, the deep internals of Perl to allow pluggable keywords, and overridable function lookup. And so this is stuff that means that it's easier and easier to embed a DSL or a custom grammar straight into the core of Perl. And so what we're doing is we're taking the parts of Perl that you used to have to hack C to change and making it so you can change them from Perl code. And so what this is going to hopefully do is make it so that you can mutate Perl's um, syntax and semantics even easier at runtime from Perl 5 code. This is one of the things that is coolest in my eyes about Perl 6, and I want to steal it. Um, and we're very, very slowly and cautiously getting there. Um, we had a dtrace support if you're on a platform that supports dtrace. Um, we, for the first time ever, started deprecating modules from the core. So we had class is a pod planer, shell, and switch. All of these have been core modules for a long time, and they don't really belong there anymore. So in, in 5.12, we said they're deprecated. In 5.14, they'll be gone. They won't exist anymore. Um, you'll have to actually get them from CPAN, but that's pretty easy. Um, in 5.14, we'll be removing even more of these old things. A lot of Perl 4 scripts that shipped in the core, in 5.14, they'll be deprecated, and in 5.16, they'll be gone. Um, there's an English expression, yada, yada, yada. It's when somebody is talking, 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 kind of boring, kind of repeat, repetitive, not very, not very useful. So Perl 512 has yada, yada, yada. And by that, I mean a new operator. Have you ever written code like this? Starting to fi figure out an API, name of subroutine, die, unimplemented. They'll do it later. Now, you just need to write that, and Perl will know. Both of them give the exact same output. This and this do the same thing now. Just an easier way of helping people mock up APIs. Um, there's a lot more going on in 5.12. If you want to know about everything, just pull up Perl uh, the Perl Delta.